All right, here's how to assemble the Bose Lifestyle 20 Music Center. You're gonna start by taking a uh, flathead screwdriver, pry bar, or some other tool, and you're gonna wanna hit here, 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 and here to pry up the top cover. This unit has not been opened before, so it's gonna be a little tight. All right, the two plastic rivets fasteners, plastic rivet fasteners are dislodged here. And the two plastic rivet fasteners are nearly dislodged here. That's one, and that's two. And now the only thing holding this is some adhesive here and some adhesive here. So just pull back. And you'll notice the rivet fasteners are still connected to the top panel here. Uh, that's not necessarily always the case. It's not a big deal if this rips off halfway. Uh, halfway, You can just super glue it back on anyway. Now, one, two, three. These are the three screws Phillips head that we need to remove but first need to take out this spring that allows this nice clean operation of the front lift cover here. So easy enough. Unless you happen to stick yourself in your thumb, which is actually the first time that's happened. Whoops. Okay, Phillips heads. All right, go ahead and remove this ribbon cable here. You can just wiggle it right off. And now pop these tabs, these four tabs, towards the center of the unit, just like that. And then this black plastic assembly will pop right out. Oh, before we do that though, we need to remove the lift cover and this comes right out. Now we can remove this black casing, just like that. And lift out the disc drive. And the four springs that house it, or that stabilize it. Put those somewhere safe. Okay, now we can fix the uh, display issue. I actually hadn't shown that before. This unit has a very dim display. We'll see if we can demonstrate that here. Yeah, you can see it ever so slightly and it's more uh, luminescent now that the black plastic cover has fallen off. So the display is working for some modes. I think we're on tape right now and it's hard, oh wait, yeah, this is tape. It's not really displayed. And then it looks like it works a little for CD. Buh, buh, buh. Okay. So yes, this uh, unit has a very dim display and we're gonna wanna replace five capacitors starting with this one to uh, fix that. Make sure you unplug the unit before you work on it don't want to electrocute yourself. Uh, and while you have it opened, you can see a little dusty. Definitely want to clean that out. Uh, this, these units are manufactured around 95, 96. So always good to give it a cleaning once a decade or so. Right, so the five capacitors you want to take off. 
Uh, I think, let me double check real quick. I think there buh, 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 should be 50 volts, 100 micro Farron. I will uh, double check that, post that in the link. But yeah, here's the first one you want to remove. And then the other four are on the bottom of this uh, assembly. Uh, so in order to solder those, pop out your tape input and output. Slide this out. Oh wait, you need to pop out this headphone jack. In case you were wondering, this is a headphone jack over here. You need to pop that out as well. And that basically entails just wiggling it. And there we go. Just push on it from the other side. So that's probably the way to do this. I've disassembled a couple dozen of these and I still can't recall how to do them all. All right, and then you can flip this and it's a lot easier to desolder these. One, two, three, four, these are the other four. Um, I would recommend, one, two, three, four. I would recommend uh, just replacing all of them. Capacitors are cheap. Um, and I've had it in the past where I've just replaced one, turned it back on, it was working. And then a couple months later, another capacitor failed and I had to replace them all. So you'll save yourself time if you just replace them all uh, up front. And then the best way to replace these, I find, is to take some pliers, uh, take your soldering iron, heat up you know, at the base here, and then pull with the soldering iron. So then you can remove these uh, and then uh, desolder the, any solder that's in the holes here with a desoldering pump or you know with a really thin tip uh, utility tool and then uh, just plug in those other capacitors. I think the first time I did this took like an hour. Uh, it gets much faster once with practice. So now we will go ahead and reassemble this. Uh, actually I'm gonna go ahead and replace those capacitors and then we'll reassemble this. Okay, so the soldering is done, and one additional note, these are the markings of the uh, capacitors you're going to want to replace. On the circuit board, there's a label for each capacitor or each component, and look for these um, labels if you're unsure, and these are the capacitors you're going to want to replace. Again, they're 50 volts, 100 microfarad, and uh, yeah, so just take your time with the soldering. Uh, I'm by no means an expert on it, but there are some other videos on YouTube. Uh, check those out, take your time, and uh, it's hard to mess up. You know, it's, it might be laborious, but uh, hard to mess up. Here is what uh, a replacement capacitor looks like, at least. You can get like a hundred of them for five bucks if you buy it straight from China on eBay, or, you know, for bah, three or four bucks, you can get like 10 shipped from the US you have it at the end of the week. So that's all good and well. Now let's go ahead and reassemble the uh, the Lifestyle Music Center. Uh, but I guess first we should double check that it actually works. So let's slide this back into place more or less and see if it works here. And you'll notice the disk drive doesn't have to be plugged in uh, for the unit to work. So let's check this out, the moment of truth. Hey, look at that. And we just turn off the lights here so you can get an idea for how bright this actually is. There might be a little bit of glare. Uh, still some glare from the window, but uh, in person, much brighter. Uh, just about back to factory settings here. Looks good. Let me see if this will help. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is a pretty good representation of what I'm seeing and uh, works pretty well. Turn that off, unplug it, and uh, buh, 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 buh. yes, so reassembling this can be a little daunting. You don't have a guide, so we'll go ahead and take it slow and steady. First things first, work in opposite order and tuck this headphone jack back into place. And this doesn't have to be perfect. 
tuck this wire in here so it's nice and safe. And then you're just gonna wanna work with this headphone unit until it snaps into place. Um, this isn't perfect, but what's nice is once you put the circuit board back in place, um, even if this isn't in there super tight 100%, this circuit board prevents it from being pushed out. So even if it wiggles a little bit when you put your headphone jack in um, or your headphone in, it should still work uh, fully functional. This is pretty decent. A little bit of wiggle, but it's not going anywhere, especially once the circuit board is pushed back into place 100%. So we'll do that. Tape input analog here. This is never, oh, this actually works pretty well. And then once we put the disk drive back in there, it will uh, feel more firm. So that's good. Double check that this wire here tucks under there. It's not 100% necessary, but you know, you like to do things to make sure it's up to uh, better shape than when it was put in there originally. Okay, so let's see, double check. Yep, everything looks good. Oh, one other note. This uh, media toggles here, these toggles, you can unsnap this from the, uh, the base here. So if you are having a hard time soldering this or whatever, feel free to unsnap this. Uh, you should be able to put it back. Um, yeah, so just good to know. All right. Before we put the disk drive back, add our springs. And there you go, that just falls into place. Add the plastic. Uh, assembly really important make sure you put the ribbon cable through the assembly that way everything will tuck nicely ah, I'm forgetting something right around this stage this is a little tricky here is when you want to put back this uh, this front cover and if you don't do this well if you don't do this properly I should say it's not going to function as intended so it's really important that you get this right First things first, you're gonna want this here to line up with the black assembly. So when you put this in here, you're gonna want this part making contact with the, re the bottom of that. Additionally, these two holes here, you're gonna want to align with this casing here so that everything snaps in. So I'm just gonna put this in here. falls in nicely and then you see I'm really paying attention to this part off to the left here to make sure when I slide this uh, black casing down that it catches just right on top of this here okay it looks like that might have worked Oops. Uh -huh. yeah that was off a little bit but I'm just gonna look from another angle here make sure that that's still touching yep Okay, and then if you really look closely, you'll see that they're snapped in right there. That reassuring click tells you everything's in there well. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Oh, I forgot to mention, make sure you clean your unit while you've got it open. Uh, clean off any blood from the spring if you uh, are an idiot like myself. Okay. This end, as opposed to this end. You see the difference? That's how you wanna make sure this end goes on here. And then stretch this all the way back to this part right here. If this is unbent, you know, feel free to grab some tweezers or whatever and bend it back. And now let's just double check that this cover works nicely. Yeah, look at that. No grinding or anything. Okay, works good. Works well. This adhesive should still work. Um, oh, yeah, this is important. 
plug your CD player back in, otherwise that's going to be a pain. And then in another video we can cover on how to fix a CD player if uh, people are having that issue. It seems like it's a common, there are a couple common issues with that. Several different motors, changer fails, ejector fails, actual uh, playing feature fails. We'll get this rear, this uh, I don't know, black display cover on. Okay, so this is actually the way that you want to put it back in there. Easy enough. Start towards the bottom, and then once it clicks on the bottom, just push in the top. And now, uh, pretty easy. Just don't forget about these last three screws here. And maybe don't use a pocket knife screwdriver when you're doing this. But yeah, so that's that. And uh, final stop here. It's nice because we actually have all four rivets. All plastic rivets are still on there. Uh, so really, we just have to pop this back in. Again, sometimes uh, the plastic rivets will get stuck in here, in which case you're probably gonna wanna take some super glue and uh, attach it to the base here so that they will uh, reattach. And when we put this back in, just align this uh, little mark here with uh, the edge of the panel and you'll feel everything move in, aligned, push down. Don't be afraid to really put some uh, gusto in there. And that adhesive is still pretty strong. Look at that. Eh. Oh, here's the problem. There we go. This wasn't aligned 100%, so I just kind of used some elbow grease there, aligned it. Maybe now this behaves a little better. There we go. Yeah, so this piece right here was uh, ajar a little bit. Now we can load up this back in and resume operation. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, sorry for the camera setup here. It's not exactly a tripod I'm using, it's a lamp. So that explains that.